What if we told you a bridge taught people how to dive safer? But there's more. At History Scalpel, we look at the fascinating history of the Brooklyn Bridge beyond the obvious. Let's set the stage in 1883 when the bridge was opened. Americans built a bridge that spanned the East River to connect Manhattan to Brooklyn. So now, Uncle Vinny wasn't a ferry ride away anymore. But at what cost? Body count. During the 14 years it took to construct the Brooklyn Bridge, a total of 20 people died. That's amazing considering how dangerous the work would be at any time. The bridge is over a mile long, 85 feet wide, and sits 127 feet above the water's surface. In fact, at the time of its opening, the Brooklyn Bridge was the longest suspension bridge in the world. But that's not even taking into account things like safety measures and medical treatments that we take for granted now. Those didn't exist when construction started on the bridge in 1869. But New Yorkers are not ones to roll over easily when faced with the challenge. Let's not forget about it. The first death to occur during the famous bridge's construction happened in spectacularly horrific fashion in 1871 when a cable rigger named John French came down with a splitting headache. What? How is that spectacular and or horrific? Well, we literally mean splitting headache. You see, the top of poor John's head was taken right off when a large wooden boom used in the construction suddenly came loose and hit him. Because, you know, New York always seems to have to do things bigger. That same year, a man known only as Doherty was crushed to death by part of the bridge known as a derrick mast. What a way to go, right? Something to keep in mind here is that while the part of the bridge that drivers use daily is 127 feet above the water, if you were standing on top of either of the bridge's two towers, you would be standing 275 feet above the water. And thanks to a little something called surface tension, a fall from that height essentially turns the water below into concrete to soften you up for a drowny finish. Objectively, it's one of the most horrifying ways to die. As you can probably imagine, several workers fell victim to this horrific plummet during the bridge's construction. Bend over. When people think about the tragic deaths linked to the Brooklyn Bridge's construction, we typically talk about what happened above the surface. We hear about the falls, but rarely about the bends, which took the lives of men like John Myers and Patrick McKay. We're willing to bet that some of you already pictured someone falling or being crushed by something. Shockingly, few people ever consider the lives lost due to events below the water's surface. After all, the Brooklyn Bridge isn't just floating on the water. The bridge's towers extend to 44 and a half feet under the water on the Brooklyn side and 78 and a half feet under the water on the Manhattan side. So you can probably imagine building the foundation came with some unique challenges. Essentially, this was an absolutely hellacious job. The foundations were constructed on caissons, watertight chambers that were put face down into the river. Inside the structure was an air pocket so people could work and theoretically survive. Remember when Jack Sparrow and Will Turner used an upside-down canoe to breathe underwater in the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie? It was basically a giant version of that, and it sucked as bad as you can imagine. While inside, the unlucky workers were tasked with manually digging or sometimes using dynamite to dig deeper. The conditions these men, known as sand hogs, worked in seemed like punishment. One worker described the conditions as working in a small iron chamber where it got as hot as 80 degrees. Oh, but it gets so much worse. Keep in mind, they were digging underwater, meaning while boiling up top, they were also standing waist deep in icy water under double the normal atmospheric pressure. The whole time, compressed air was pumped into their workspace to keep the water out and to prevent the men from drowning. Did we mention that there were kids as young as 16 doing this job? But hey, it couldn't have been all bad, right? The best part of the day is going home. Well, not at all. It was actually the most dangerous. This is due to our friend, the Benz, a.k.a. Kaysen disease. This neurological condition occurs when the nitrogen in the bloodstream bubbles due to a rapid decrease in atmospheric pressure when people resurface too quickly from being underwater for extended periods. Anyone who's ever felt the effects can tell you it's beyond unpleasant. Upon arriving at the surface, these workers experience some random combination of strange muscular paralysis, slurred speech, vomiting, chills, excruciatingly sharp joint pains, and stomach cramps. 
Sadly, three workers died in short succession as a result of the bends. One of them died after only his second day on the job, collapsing at home with stomach pain after finishing work. And you thought you had a bad day at work. What's in a name? So far, we've used the terms the Benz and Kaysen disease fairly interchangeably. So what's the difference between the two? Well, it's something so amazing and fantastically head-spinning that you aren't going to believe it. The difference is the name. That's it. More to the point, the term Kaysen disease originally came from the fact that so many men who worked under the Kaysens where the Brooklyn Bridges Foundations lay fell ill. Today, Kaysen disease is typically called the Benz, or decompression sickness. While, thankfully, only three men died as a result of the Benz during the bridge's construction, it's been reported that 86 men suffered symptoms. In fact, it was the doctor who looked after those men, Dr. Andrew H. Smith, who coined the term. Pretty obvious name when you think about it. He might as well have called it the came-up-too-fast disease. Again, today, medical professionals know what to look for and the causes of Kaysen disease. But as is often the case when an illness is new, Dr. Smith wasn't exactly sure what the best treatment was, let alone the causes of the illness. So to treat the men and ease their pain and suffering, he injected them with good old-fashioned morphine. In our current day and age, treatment for those suffering includes a patient receiving high, high high-flow oxygen, or in extreme cases, the patient would be placed in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, which is a high-pressure chamber, usually in the shape of a tube where a patient is lying down and receiving a pressurized oxygen mixture. If you've ever seen the movie Deadpool, think of a non-torturous version of the glass tube that Wade Wilson was put into to induce his powers. The point is that in 1872, This sort of treatment was not only not an option, but it wasn't even an idea yet. However, to the doctor's credit, he discovered that the time of exposure to compressed air was directly proportional to the severity of symptoms of Kaysen disease. Essentially, the longer a person is underwater breathing compressed air, the higher the odds of them getting the bends. So if you happen to be diving underwater, breathing compressed air for, say, oh, 48 hours, there's a 100% chance you'll suffer at least some effects. So how do you avoid the effects of the bends if you go scuba diving? Well, like they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a ton of cure. So to that end, it's best to head for the surface at a rate of about 33 feet a second. But to be honest, some of you would just prefer some of the morphine that those who worked on the Brooklyn Bridge got, right? While the treatment for decompression sickness has clearly improved, it's important to remember that it will never not be a concern for anyone who scuba dives and has to spend long chunks of time underwater. The only surefire prevention is to stay on or above the water's briny depths. If nothing else, we hope that you remember that if you're deep underwater, come up slowly and follow diving charts. The bends are a bad time all around. Have you ever experienced the bends yourself? Feel free to tell us in the comments below. See you next time.